Hey, and welcome guys. Today what we have is the ED209 from Robocop. Uh, this is some Horizon models. I believe it was released somewhere around 1989. It's a vinyl model kit that is one ninth scale. It's about 11 inches tall. I recently did a vinyl Darth Vader from AMT, so hopefully that experience will help me with the build of this one. So um, let's just get started by taking a look at all the different parts. All right, we got all the parts laid out. As you can see, it's a really nice size. The head alone is uh, really big. Uh, the mold itself is fair. Um, it looks pretty nice. There are some imperfections, as you can see some right here, especially in this mess, mesh section over the head. There's a lot of little imperfections that hopefully we can sand out. The uh, legs, uh, the back of the legs, this is supposed to be hollow right here. Um, I'll probably just paint that black uh, I've seen some modelers cut this section out and to give it a more accurate look. Uh, but you have to, when you do that, you didn't have to support it with some rods or something because it's a vinyl. You're removing the support that holds it all in place and it will probably sag over time. Uh, I probably won't do that. I'll probably just go to the safe route, leave it intact, paint it black. I'll probably fill some expanding foam to make sure it stays in position. I'm afraid if we cut through this that it just doesn't look good in there. You'd have to try to touch it up. You may damage it and it may not look that good anyway. So I'm just going to go a safe route with that. Um, but the next thing we're going to have to do is uh, wash it up with some hot soap and water or some soap and water and then start removing some of this flashing here. So I'm just going to get busy with that. All right, I got all my parts washed and just using some water and dish soap. And got it clean, uh, all cleaned up. I did some of the trimming. Now, just uh, I haven't did the detailed trimming. Just uh, the most of the uh, excess flash that was on there, I've trimmed up. Um, some issues came apparent, as you can see on this back part of of his head here. Uh, it's a little warped, kind of leaning uh, to my right. And I tried to take some warm water and heat it up and bend it into shape. And wants to bend back. I'm going to try to use a hairdryer and some other things, see if I can't get that back in shape. I think once we get it attached to this, it will kind of, it will kind of straighten itself out. Uh, but an uh, issue we're going to have, and I, I still have a lot of uh, trimming and sanding to do. This is very rough right now. But I can just tell from the way this is wanting to sit on here that this is not going to be a clean fit. And I'm going to have to do a lot of probably putty work, especially on this side. Like I said, still a lot of trim to do, but that's going to take a lot of work to get that all attached. I do plan on at some point putting some expanding foam in here to hold that shape and maybe a little bit back in this back part to hold this shape. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but anyway, those are some of the issues that have come up. Just working on a little bit of detail on some of the parts here. These are kind of like the ears of our ED209, and they lack any kind of detail. They're hollow, so I thought I'd just cut up some styrene, and what I did is I just super glued it on here once I sanded the part down to make a nice and level surface. And then I, once I attached the styrene, I sanded around it to take away the hard edge. Add a little bit of half round styrene. I might do a little bit more to give a little bit more detail, just to give us a better look, a more armored look to the piece here instead of uh, when you look over and see kind of that hollow piece. So I think it's a, you know, a big improvement over what was on the kit. All right, as you can see, I've attached uh, the two parts of the main body together. It was a little tricky. I had to heat it up with uh, both parts with a hair dryer that made them both kind of pliable. Then I put some super glue around the edge of the back part. And then I had to kind of press it and hold it into place. Now, it did kind of straighten it up, but I have realized that I wasn't quite on center. It's a little, on this side's flush, which I thought both sides was flush and this side's not. Now, it's not terribly noticeable. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I was just happy that I kind of got a fairly good seal around here. Uh, as you can see, there's some putty in there. There's still some cleanup to do. Uh, on that part of it, but I'm fixing to uh, go ahead and I'm going to put some expanding foam inside here. Now I have to leave some space for when I connect um, his leg part here, his uh, 
center uh, part of his body, I guess, that connects to the legs that has to press into position. Uh, the trick of getting this in, I originally thought I was just going to glue it in, but the way these work is you cut an opening, you heat both parts, and then you kind of mash them in and you get these joints that, that go into place. And it's a really secure uh, way of connecting it. I mean, once they're in there, they're in there, and it, it covers up the area, so it makes for a nice uh, connecting point, and that'll be the same on the body as this is actually the part that'll connect uh, right here. So I have to leave a little bit of space on that, but I think if I fill uh, probably two-thirds of it with the foam, I just have to be careful because it is expanding foam and uh, do sections. That'll help hold this shape over time right now. It looks, everything's looking good, but I have seen where this has sagged over time on some other models. So I just want to kind of avoid that. And I think if we put some expanding foam down, I'll keep holding, I'll give it the support it needs to hold its shape. So I'm just gonna work on that and uh, let's keep moving forward. All right, we're starting to put most of it together now. As you can see, I've put on his uh, part that connects his legs. I did put in some expanding foam in this section and this section, and while the foam was still expanding, I went ahead and connected those together. Uh, that way it, it kind of filled in the whole thing. So uh, I've also put in foam inside of most of these other parts. As you can see here, you can see the bottom of the legs. Now the bottom legs also have the plaster of Paris in about half of it to give it weight. Uh, you can see where I've already uh, trimmed it up, and it's still expanding a little bit in this one. Um, you can just cut that off and sand it. And then we'll have to attach the second part of the legs. And then that, that will attach on here. So I'm just putting it all together right now. Once I have it all together, uh, then we'll come back and we'll start work on the paint job. All right, we have them all together. It was a little tricky getting his uh, legs on. Uh, probably the weakest part of the connection is you have this section right here that uh, glues to the bottom part of the leg. And there's no connecting points and it doesn't uh, snap in like the other parts do. It would have been nice if it would have because it's basically uh, just glued on here. Now I did use some two-part epoxy uh, to fill in around there. So hopefully I have a nice strong bond around there. In retrospect, I kind of wish I would have put a rod or something all the way through there. So, But hopefully that epoxy is strong enough because uh, it's now holding all the weight of the uh, upper part of the body or the, the body. Uh, I'm glad that we put the foam in there because it's it kind of runs through here and also into this part right here So we have a, uh, Some more support internal support with that uh, expanding foam throughout the body. It's um, Got a little bit of heft because of the plaster of Paris and the expanding foams added some weight to it Which is fine it makes it just stable uh, most of the parts you just heat up and and snap them in together uh, there is some parts that are somewhat movable still um, with it so I haven't glued all of it together. I have some cleanup to do and then we're going to be adding a coat of primer and then we'll move on to paint. Okay I've put a coat of primer over our 8209 and just doing some touching up. I had a uh, drop of super glue fall here that I didn't notice still after our prime so I had to sand that over and had a clean up on some of the joints where some of the super glue kind of leaked out and a few other places it's kind of clean up. Whenever you put primer on it usually brings out some imperfections so just working on uh, trying to clean those up as best I can. You know, it's a little difficult working with vinyl. It doesn't really sand like plastic does so uh, just doing the best I can on that. But overall I'm fairly pleased with uh, how all the constructions come together on the top here, you know, this was a real troubled area right in here, and it's right on the top in plain view. I think we've mostly got it. I may try to clean up a little bit more. Like I said, it's some very thin vinyl sitting here, so trying to sand it and uh, just make it smooth, it tends to rough up the vinyl, and it's really hard to get it and look, uh, you know, like a sharp edge on there. But it's coming together. Um, and I'm going to work a little bit more, but I don't know how much better it's going to get than that right there. It doesn't look bad. It's not going to be terribly noticeable. We don't have any open gaps, and it does seem to be on there pretty good. So uh, just have to go with it from there, and uh, I'm going to work on that. And then we're going to uh, we'll have to figure out the painting. I'm not sure if we're going to do a solid base coat over everything or if I need to paint this uh, area here black and then mask that off because I don't want to put too much more paint on this. 
uh, the detail. Well, I'm afraid I'll start losing detail if I put a lot of unnecessary coats of paint on there. So I'm thinking I'll go ahead and paint this area black, let it dry, mask it off, and then we'll do a base coat on the rest of it. All right, I've painted the uh, top part of his head here with a gloss black, and I just used some uh, a Model Master gloss black acrylic paint. And while I did that, I decided I'd go ahead and do some of the uh, low lights around the model, some pre shading. And uh, so we're just getting ready. I actually haven't decided on the paint scheme yet as far as the base color. I'm leaning toward more of that kind of light blue, gray blue color. Um, but undecided yet. Uh, but he's looking good. Uh, the the uh, uh, pre shading alone really brings out a lot of detail. It looks kind of cool that way. But we got a long way to go. We're going to change up the color and stuff and do a lot of detail painting. And I do want to add in some extra detail. But we'll get that get to that once we finish the painting. All right, we uh, have the base coat applied to our Ed 209. I just used my airbrush and I use this acrylic craft paint from Folk Art. Uh, the color is Echo or Blue Echo 2639. I thinned it out with a little window cleaner. The window cleaner has alcohol, which helps it to dry faster and uh, thin it out a little bit more. So uh, you do have to thin that out quite a bit. It's pretty thick coming out of the tube, but I think it did a pretty good job with the cover. I did uh, several light coats. I had it thinned out pretty uh, pretty thin, almost to a water, watery type uh, consistency. Uh, but I think it went on pretty well. I just had to do several thin coats of it. And so now I'm just doing, there's a lot of little detail painting. I've already started with some of this uh, up here around the guns and legs. And I uh, just used uh, some Panzer Dark Gray from Vallejo Model Air. And I'm just hand brushing that on. And there's just a lot of colors right now. So I'm going to have to spend a lot of time. There's some silvers and chromes. I'm going to have to do some blacks, some other things. And then once I get done with all that uh, detail painting, I do want to add in some detail. And when I get to that, I'll come back to that. But I'm really happy with the blue color. Uh, I think it looks sharp and uh, starting to take form here. Anyway, so we'll just uh, keep moving on. Hey guys, just working on some defined details now, some of the painting and uh, doing some weathering here. And I'm just using this Tamiya uh, Weathering Master, these powders. And uh, what I use, uh, it comes with some brushes, but I like to use some old worn down brushes that just have a little bit of left on the, the knobs and stuff and I just take and you know just kind of brush it into my powders a little bit and for instance <clears throat> on these uh, vents right here we want to darken these up these are some look like some kind of exhaust vents so I want to get inside there and darken those up real good there's lots of ways to do this you can also use some washes to kind of get in there and darken it up uh, this is a little bit more controlled but I'm also going to darken all around these edges right here now once i get done i'll apply a matte finish to make sure uh, to close it all in lock it all in because it'll wipe off right now and if you do get a little too much on there you can wipe it off i'm just going to darken all around here i like to do in the recessed areas get all darkened uh, there's a lots of little um, rivets or whatever kind of screw marks i don't know what these are but uh, this is where this little nub comes in handy. I can darken that up and uh, be very precise in darkening all these little rivet, rivet areas. And then I'll put a matte coat in there. So I'm just doing that all throughout the model. Okay, well here we are with our finished Ed 209 from Horizon Models uh, from the Robocop movies. Uh, Finished up, just doing a lot of hand painting. Several hours of uh, painting in a lot of little details uh, all around the legs. There's a lot more than you first think of. Uh, had some silvers in here, some grays, a lot of blacks, some dark grays, um, different types of silvers. As you can tell, I've added in a little extra detail. I, take, I took some uh, electrical wires and added in here. If you look at the uh, shooting miniature, there's lots of wiring, a lot more than what I had display. I may go back and have, add a little bit more, uh, but it's all around the feet. If you can uh, kind of make out, uh, I've added in just some wiring here and there in different places to kind of give it that extra look. Uh, one place that I noticed the model, the shooting miniature had was this uh, cables that ran on the top here. There's actually was connecting points where they connected, but there was no cable included. 
I just took some heavy gate electrical wire, super glued it in place, took some brass tubing, cut it out, and uh, made these little holders for it and super glued those in place and then painted them silver. I did a uh, some matte coat, um, a couple of matte coats on it to dull it all down, except for I left the uh, original gloss black on his uh, top of the top of his head here. I also left um, after the matte coats. I went in with my chromes, so I didn't want to dull those down. So I did those last. I put those on his uh, little actuators right here, whatever these are, and over here. Uh, just a lot of hand painting, a lot of details, went in with some dry pastels, a uh, little bit of Tamiya Penaline accent color around different areas to give it that weathered look. So overall, really happy with it. It was a fun project, challenging project, uh, but you get a nice size, a nice looking display. I hope to uh, get some decals for it in the future. I know JBot decals uh, makes a set, so hopefully I can get some of those and add on to it. Uh, the shooting miniature has lots of little warning uh, emblems and decals on it that really add to it. I don't really want to try to mess this up by hand painting some of those uh, hazards uh, decals and stuff of that nature. I would really just want to order those and get those on. I think they would look really nice. So anyway guys, hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Until next time, everybody have a good one.